All right. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I see some familiar names here, which is a good thing. I, I just wanted to mention that uh, we're just going to wait for <clears throat> just a few more minutes, see if uh, there's more people coming. So can I suggest that we start at uh, 1740? Meantime, let me just send a message to the WhatsApp group to remind people that we have class. Uh, so we're starting at 1740. Good evening. Hi, Mr. Waria. How are you? Well, thank you very much. How are you doing yourself? I'm good. I'm good. Am yeah. I audible? You are audible. Although you're a bit faint, but uh, we can hear you. No, I'm the, my laptop was the formatted on Friday, but it doesn't have all the sites. Ah, okay. Right. I have it also on Friday. Okay. So I'll just think that we're starting at 1740. Yes. All right, thank you.
All right, I, I suppose we can start. It's already uh, 17.40. And I'm not sure if we are we're expecting any more people. Uh, I have not yet interacted with the postgraduate coordinator or the HOD to, <clears throat> to find out exactly how many people are enrolled into the program. But I'm meant to believe that uh, we're supposed to have slightly more than, more than uh, the number we have right now. But anyway, um, so I suppose we will start. Just a quick test to check if you can hear me. I don't know if you can hear me by checking my microphone. I can hear you from this side. Okay, thank you very much. And then uh, here is to hoping you can, I've just shared my screen. Screen. I'm not sure if you can you can see my screen. No. Yes. I can see your screen. So much. Okay. Thank you. All right. So uh, I suppose we will start. Uh, there's there's a few slides dedicated to introductions, but I'll I'll, I'll introduce myself in in ways. Uh, so my name is Lighton Piri. Uh, and uh, we'll be working together in CSC 5741, which is uh, data mining and warehousing. Normally the first class is dedicated to administrative issues and logistical issues, uh, and also a brief overview of the course itself uh, so that we have a sense of, of what, to, what to expect. So essentially we're just going to walk through the various modules that we, um, we're going to cover as part of 5741. Um, uh, there's there's something else that I find very disturbing about the uh, the way the sessions are organized, right? So these are meant to be, is it two hour long sessions? Is it two or three hours or something? Uh, about two hours anyway. Um, it, so in the past we've experimented with a number of a number of models, right? Uh, because it's very easy for for you to to get to get bored and disinterested if 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 you have a class or a lecture that's uh, two hours long. So what we tend to do, traditionally what we've done is uh, we, we, we try as much as possible to combine uh, theoretical aspects that we're covering with a bit of, a bit of practical. Um, so prior to, to the advent of COVID-19, what we do in the labs is uh, the second half of the session was, was dedicated to practical sessions, uh, essentially trying to reinforce the theories discussed. Um, we'll try and see if we can make this work uh, during this blended mode of instruction. And I think I, sh I should mention up front here that, uh, and I hope I'm recording this session, I am recording. I should mention up front that, uh, so I, I, I don't know what, I, I don't know if we are going to exclusively have these online interactions or maybe we can, we can alternate between, depending on what sort of topic we're covering, maybe we can also have sessions, physical sessions or face-to-face -face sessions, but we will, I guess we get to decide once we get there. Uh, so today's class, or today's uh, session is, is just going to walk us through these five parts. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to get all the way up to part number four, but we'll see what happens. Uh, we'll start with administrivia, just a, a, few, a few introductions here. And usually because these are, uh, significantly small classes, usually it's less than 20 people. Um, we, we tend to prefer that they are more interactive and if, if you need to, if you need to interrupt me as I'm walking us through the slides, feel, feel free and do that. Uh, no need for us to use the Google Meet feature to raise your hand or something. Uh, all right, <clears throat> so Ms. Trivia. I thought I'd, I'd start off by introducing, uh, just contextualizing what I do uh, work-wise or at the UNSA. Uh, so it turns out that I'm, I'm not, um, I'm, I'm not, I'm based in the Department of Library and Information Science in the School of Education. But I've I found myself, because of my background, I guess I find myself in a unique position where I, I also participate in academic activities in the Computer Science Department. Um, so this is one such activity I've been, I think this is the third year I'm, um, I'm lecturing 5741. Uh, but in case you want to find out more about me, um, you'll find my details on the main user website, there's a link there. Uh, but also in, in terms of uh, research wise, and I guess my academic career, 
um, you will find details about myself and my, my personal, my personal, uh, there's a personal departmental web profile that I have. I, I normally, I normally put uh, teaching oriented and research oriented uh, content there. Uh, again, there's a link. Uh, but in addition to that, uh, my immediate past, I spent my immediate past in graduate school. I spent some almost five, six years there. Uh, so I was at uh, the University of Cape Town between 2011 all the way up to 2018. So um, it's quite, quite a bit of time there. Uh, you will find uh, details of uh, the things I did, the activities I participated in, in case you're interested, if you, if you care enough, uh, right there, including, I guess, more important things here is uh, the labs that I was affiliated. It turns out that some of the things we're going to be talking about, some of the examples I'm going to be giving, are uh, probably going to be aligned with, with the activities I, I participated in when I was a graduate student. Um, and, and then recently, um, we formed an informal, um, it's a research lab. Uh, so it mostly comprises of, for now, it's mostly composed of myself and uh, postgraduate students and also final year undergraduate students that I, I work with. Um, so you might be interested in especially visiting maybe the, the research page and perhaps the people page, which will give you, will give you a list of, of uh, postgraduate students that I work with and, and also fourth year students that I, I'm currently supervising and students that I've supervised in, in the past. I've, I've not really been at the UNSA for a long time. This is my, this is my fourth year. So I've, I've clocked three years. I clocked three years in, in December, the first of December last year. Um, but yeah, so feel free to visit these links. Uh, you might especially be interested in, in content that's more aligned with maybe data mining. Um, and it turns out that I'm, I'm actually working with uh, with a student who is in the process of, of writing his dissertation, um, Robert. All right, so, so I, I don't know, maybe we can take turns, seeing as I've introduced myself, maybe we can take turns and have people introduce themselves. Um, I'd like to kindly ask that when you're introducing yourself, maybe you, um, you start with your full names and, uh, and maybe a preference on, as we're interacting, what you'd prefer us to refer to you. Uh, I prefer my first name myself, so uh, just call me Lighton, that's fine. I don't know if you prefer me to call you Mr. Wadia, for instance, or Mrs. Monday or something, I don't know. And then also maybe a brief background in terms of your formal education background, maybe beginning with your, your bachelor's, where you, where you did your bachelor's um, degree from, where you got it from, um, and, and subsequent qualifications that you've acquired. Um, and in terms of, uh, uh, career, we are more interested in maybe having a sense of what you do for a living. Uh, it turns out that what makes this course, in my opinion, what makes it interesting, um, the life experiences, or experiences that people have had in their past work lives. Uh, we've had people from places like ZRA, uh, from various banks, and it's, it's always nice when we are covering certain aspects of the course, um, when we have people share their experiences. Um, I think that's, that's the most interesting, for me anyway, it's the most interesting part about the course. Um, and then possibly you could tell us also what you hope to get from CSC 5741, aside from the fact that uh, it's one of those mandatory courses, so it's not, <laughs> it's not an elective, it's a mandatory course. So maybe we can take turns, uh, um, I'm looking at my uh, screen right now, and uh, we can follow the, the order that's uh, on the right here. I think we'll start with uh, Derek Wari and then we'll go to Francis and then uh, Makonde, Martin, and then Mike. All right. Okay, thanks, uh, uh, Dr. Kizu. My name is uh, Derek Wadia. So like Doc, I feel like you put it, I also prefer just to be called by the first name. Since no, I'm not in the, <laughs> the parastatos where you can address by the mister or whatever. So I just prefer the first name, Derek. My formal education, I did my Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Computer Science from the University of Zambia. Yeah, and um, what else? Uh, yeah, then I think later in the years, I think some two, three years ago, I did uh, an MBA 
that was through distance education with the schedule for team visiting. So right now, what am I doing? What am I up to? I'm currently working for Zanaco. I work for, I work in the IT department of Zambia National Commercial Bank. It used to be called Zambia National Commercial Bank. It's now just called Zanaco. What do I hope to get from this? Of course, I want to enrich my skills and just the knowledge about data mining, data warehousing, and all the processes that go with data. Because the world in which we're living in is data driven. So for you to be, uh, to, to get up to speed with what is happening in the uh, digital space, you need to get to know the concepts of data storage, data mining, data retrieval, all such kind of things. And also the big data. So those are the things that I expect to get out of this. And also just that practical aspect of it as opposed to the theoretical part of the course. Thank you. All right, that's, thanks a lot. I mean, that's, uh, I should mention here that uh, I've, I've known uh, Derek for quite some time. Uh, from the time I was a uh, second year student at UNSA, and then he was uh, uh, my manager when I, I worked for <clears throat> for Celtel, Zen, and then they, they called themselves Airtel. You know, I spent some four years there. Um, it's it's nice that uh, that we meet again. Very very nice. I'm really looking forward to finding out more about what's going on at Zanaco. Incidentally, right, um, one of the products from the department is um, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with uh, work that was done by uh, Knox Kamsweka. So his dissertation was centered around uh, trying to detect fraud on large scale data that's generated in the banking sector. I thought it was really interesting. Um, although, I mean, most of what he focused on was more or less on uh, um, pattern, pattern detection using, using clustering techniques. So um, I hope, right? So part of the reason I'm saying this is I hope that uh, as we are interacting in the course, you'll be able to, to get ideas on what potential projects you will find yourselves working on next year. Um, and in fact, I think if you look at the, the way the course is designed, part of the reason why you have the coursework is to, to give you that opportunity to explore, right? You, you get exposed to a number of, um, a number of different areas. There's uh, is it distributed, distributed systems, you have advanced, um, is it web applications? I don't know if it's web applications or, I don't know what the course is called anyway. You have data mining, so there's, I think there's also advanced operating systems. Uh, hopefully by the time you're done with the coursework, you'd have identified an area that you find interesting. Um, and more specifically, um, an actual problem that you're going to undertake next year. And, and I, always, I always like putting this up front to mention that the, if, if you look at the structure of your so-called masters, uh, master by coursework and dissertation program, the coursework is probably the easiest part what what makes the program complex is the part that you get to do in the second year, the second phase. Um, in part because it's usually open-ended, right? So you don't have a fixed structure like we do right now. We know exactly when we're going to write the exam, or at least we have an idea when we're going to write the exam, when we'll write tests, and so you're pushing a corner. Um, but the research part is a, is a bit tricky because it's open-ended and also because you are, for the most part, left to, um, I don't want to say fend for yourself, but uh, in terms of identification of the problem, you're expected to come up with a problem yourself, unless if you find yourself working with somebody who will suggest a topic that you work on. Uh, so interesting stuff here, it's not just the banking sector. We've had people that have worked in the telecom sector, I think I have examples in subsequent slides where I talk about this, um, that I've, I've done interesting things. Um, by, by contextualizing the research that they, they, they did within the telecom sector. Um, some, some other interesting examples, uh, I think Lillian, was that 2018? She works for the Zambia Metro, is it Metrological Department, I think. Um, and so she was, um, she was working on a problem that was aimed at trying to predict rainfall patterns. It turns out that the, the systems that they currently use um, uh, are not are not very accurate. Okay, uh, maybe we can proceed to Mr. Francis Kawesha.
Um, thank you, Lighter. Okay. Uh, my full name is uh, Francis uh, Kawesha. Um, yeah, I prefer being called Francis. Uh, it's a common name, so luckily there is no other Francis in class. <laughs> <laughs> um, my educational background, I did a, a bachelor's uh, of science uh, from the University of Namibia. Um, I'm currently working with uh, the Higher Education Authority. Uh, I've been there for uh, a, a year and uh, six months with them. Uh, it's been interesting uh, getting to understand the uh, higher education sector <coughs> in Zambia. Um, from the course, um, I, what I think I know a lot about uh, data mining and data warehousing is really on the surface, so I'm hoping this will give me some in-depth understanding uh, of it uh, so that we see how it uh, can be implemented in the sector I'm currently working in. Uh, thank you. All right. Uh, th thanks a lot. I mean, that's uh, quite nice. Uh, uh, yeah. You're saying you're, you're at, uh, is it University of, is it UNAM or? Uh, yes, UNAM. UNAM, okay. Of Namibia. Yeah, I was going to mention that uh, uh, I, I found myself interacting with not UNAM, but uh, there's an entity called NAS, the National Invest of uh, the Namibia Invest of Technology or something. I think N Namibia oh, Invest oh, of yes, Technology. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, I, I thought it was really interesting that they've introduced what they're calling a, um, uh, a master's program in data science. Right? So, okay. uh, yeah, I'm, I'm on the board that's uh, helping them put things together. Um, I thought it was also interesting that you made mention of the fact that you, you work for HEA turns out. Uh, if you look at yes. my research profile, uh, part of what I obsess a lot about, uh, and people always ask me, why do you do research in this area? So if you look up my Google Scholar profile, for instance, what you immediately realize is that I, I work in a very, I guess what you might call a very obscure, um, very obscure area. So for the last three years, actually, we've been obsessing a lot about how we can um, improve the online visibility of uh, research output in Zambia. Um, so in yes. fact, um, if you look at what, um, what Robert, the CS student I'm, I'm working on is, is doing, it's automatic, it's document classification is essentially uh, trying to see if we can automatically uh, detect, uh, detect uh, scholarly research output. Um, and the, the idea is simple here. We, there's underrepresentation. If you look at online content, there's underrepresentation of uh, research output that comes from the so-called global south, uh, so places like Zambia. Africa to be specific. And so we're trying to figure out if we can, we can change the narrative, if you will. Um, so I guess, oh, okay. yeah, part of, part of the reason I'm also saying this is uh, um, most of the examples that I tend to use are more aligned with the, the, my research focus. And so there'll be a lot of examples to do with, um, with uh, document classification, for instance. Uh, uh, so natural language processing and things of that nature. Um, and on that note, I think I should also mention that the focus, right, and as much as this is tagged as data mining and warehousing, you find that maybe 70, 80% of, of the focus is going to be on, on techniques that are used to, to try and uh, detect patterns in data. Uh, so okay. think of the hype, um, the things that everybody's talking about nowadays, oh, machine learning and things like deep learning. Um, and in fact, we are planning maybe if time allows, this time around we can creep into the deep learning arena and try and see if we can, we can, we can look into that. But very interesting stuff. Okay, maybe we can go to the next uh, person. I think it's uh, Makonde Mwale. Um, good evening, uh, Doc. Good evening. Uh, my full name is Makonde Mwale. Um, I prefer calling me by my first name. Uh, Makonde. My background education, I've got a Bachelor of Sci uh, Computer Science uh, from uh, Zikas uh, under University of Greenwich. Uh, after that, I went for a company called Probes, and then recently in 2019, I joined uh, NAPSA uh, under NAPSA IT department, uh, software development. 
And then uh, from this uh, course, um, I want to improve my, my skills and also try to provide um, better solutions to the community. I think that's all from my end. All right. Uh, thanks, thanks a lot, uh, Makonde. So it's, uh, we, we almost always have someone who, who develops software um, for a living, right? We had uh, someone last year and the year before as well. And, and the question I always ask is, uh, uh, if we look at the tools we're developing at our workplaces these days, uh, are there instances where we incorporate uh, these fancy things that we hear about these days, like machine learning, for instance? And I, in fact, I'm thinking about NAPSA here. Can we comb through these different personal details and be able to detect uh, anomalies, perhaps? We always hear of uh, certain companies defaulting, certain names missing. Um, so I'm really keen to, to learn more about, uh, about the NAPSA landscape. I think if we had to compare the various uh, domains that, that, that have come out of people that, that, that um, enroll into 5741, I think it's the first time we have someone uh, from an entity like NAPSA, if my memory serves me right. I mean, granted, last time we had uh, someone from PACRA, that's, but that's, some, that's somewhat, uh, it's, it's different from what happens at, at NAPSA. So exciting stuff, I think. Very, very exciting stuff. Do you, in terms of development, do you have uh, certain tools that uh, incorporate aspects of maybe machine learning or, um, I don't know, uh, deep learning or something? Actually, at, at the moment uh, at NAPSA, we haven't gone into AI. Uh, we are not doing uh, anything to do with uh, machine learning, uh, but we are planning to, to invest in, uh, in those areas. Yeah. So another interesting thing that normally comes up, right? And by the way, because this is a first class, it's story time here, so it's going to be a bit boring. But another thing that normally comes up here is, uh, uh, I remember last time, uh, uh, name, name is gone, and, um, but he works in the banking sector and his question was, but how, how can I get started if, how can I convince my colleagues at work that this is something that we can consider incorporating into what we do? Uh, that's a tough question, right? Especially if you work with colleagues that are very likely not going to be at the same level as yourself once you're done with the program. I mean, the situation would be different if you if if you're part of uh, part of management like like Derek, for instance, where you can you can you can you have a bit of leeway in terms of what you can experiment with. Um, uh, so um, the the response I normally I normally give is. Uh, you can always start with pet projects. And, and I've had these conversations with uh, uh, this friend of mine who works for the central bank and he was raising the same thing. Say, um, there are certain ideas that I want to experiment with, but there's this resistance to change. Um, you have to start from somewhere, I suppose. And the unfortunate thing is that uh, there's no help coming other than from ourselves. We, we found ourselves in a very fortunate position, right? Uh, if you look at Zambia, fortunate position because uh, we are at the forefront of what's currently going on. So if you don't do it, if we don't do it, I don't think anyone else will. Unless if your, your organization decides to subcontract a so-called expert from out there who come and do things that you know you can easily do yourself. Uh, I saw a lot of that when I was working for Airtel myself, but but good stuff, uh, good, good stuff. Uh, maybe we'll go straight to Martin, on Sunday, I suppose. And feel free to cut in or to contribute if you, if you feel there's something to, to say as, as we're having this conversation. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, hi. Uh, my name is Martin Sonda. Um, I've done computer science, Bachelor of Computer Science from Cavendish University. Um, I've worked in a number of organizations um, doing training in IT related uh, courses. I've also worked in um, networking and software development. I'm currently working for the University of Zambia as a database administrator. Um, I'm hoping that from this course, um, 
I'll be able to get some new ideas about what is prevailing in the sector of data management and warehousing, uh, especially aspects to do with the security, um, fraud prevention and detection. Um, those are some of the things that I hope to get from this course. Thank you. Thanks, thanks a lot, uh, Martin. It's, uh, we you almost always have someone from Unza here, I guess, because it's a lot easier for you to just walk from <laughs> from work to, to school or something, although it doesn't count now because we are online. But but, but I, I thought I thought the point the point about training was uh, was interesting because it's very close or rather very dear to my heart here. Um, it turns out if you look at what's currently happening here, I mean, I, I don't know about your respective workplaces here, but if you look at what's happening um, globally in, in terms of uh, uh, this hype around deep learning and, and machine learning, what you will notice is that there's this strong push to, to try and make uh, AI more mainstream. Um, so gradually what's happening is you have people from disciplines that are outside of computing that are, that are trying to jump onto this bandwagon, right? Uh, I've attended a number of uh, international events where I've met with uh, mechanical engineers that are doing exciting things like trying to detect when some equipment is going to, is going to maybe wear out or something by, uh, by, by monitoring the so-called vibrations. I thought that was interesting. I, I met a, a group of individuals when I attended some event in South Africa. Um, I've been interacting with uh, uh, someone from, from uh, the university teaching hospitals. They, they're training to be a, a, prof a radiologist. They're specializing to be a radiologist. And, and in fact, we invited them to come and uh, give a talk last, last, uh, last year, which by the way, is, is part, of the, part of the structure of the course. I talk more about, about these industry seminars that we, that we organize. <clears throat> and what, what I found disturbing are some of the problems that they grapple with, right? Um, uh, and so in our conversations, the conversations we've, we've had, we've expressed interest, right? To, to try and see how they can apply some of these techniques to what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. And so I'll give you a classic example of part of what they do. Uh, currently, we'll start with a problem. Zambia has less than, is it less than five radiologists, the whole of Zambia, right? So these are people that are trained to detect, uh, if you have a CT scan and you have some, some sort of problem or something, the person who actually goes to, to study that CT, CT scan and come up with a diagnosis of, of what sort of problem you have, we have less than five of them. That's a problem right there. But it's a problem that we know can easily be accomplished, or at least in part through the use of uh, some of the things we're going to talk about, right? It's a, it's a classic uh, image, uh, is it image detection, image classification problem. There's nothing new about it, actually. If you just spend a few minutes and you go online, you realize that there, there are, in fact, uh, solutions that exist. Right, so, and we're back to the training issue here. Uh, our thinking is that there's, there's little currently go, going on in terms of trying to, to train people from other disciplines um, in, in areas such as AI and machine learning, right? So, I don't know, I mean, uh, maybe with your experience in training, perhaps uh, that's something that we can, we can try and explore. And the issue of security, I mean, it, it's tied to to the fact that uh, data mining is perhaps one of those computing areas that that is applied in so many different domains, right? Right within computing and outside of, of computing. So um, the sky is the limit here in terms of if your interest is in security, uh, I'm sure between now and uh, December, perhaps you'll be able to cover out a problem specific to security, right? You are better placed by the way, because uh, UNSA has, um, the key ingredient you soon realize once we are going through this course is always data, right? And UNSA has really available data. Um, I'm part of this very strange committee. It's, it's a Senate committee which is looking at uh, trying to explore um, uh, administering exams online. And, and something that has popped up, right? In this report that we've come up with. Something that has popped up is this issue of academic dishonesty, you know? so. Can we monitor in real time students as they're writing the exams, for instance, right? These are interesting problems that are associated with some of the things that we can do. Uh, so real time monitoring would involve you trying to, to sort of like detect uh, 
the sound coming in from the surroundings, um, trying to periodically detect uh, the face of the person that's writing the exam, for instance. Again, these are, so, so there are known solutions to most of these things, but uh, we can easily contextualize some of these problems by looking at Zambia or places like the UNSA, right? So if your interest is in security, um, there's, there's potential for you to apply data mining techniques that we are going to talk about in this course in that particular area. But good stuff. Uh, maybe we can go to uh, Mike Mudimba now, I suppose. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Um, so my full name is uh, Mike Mudimba. Uh, you can call me Mike for short. Uh, then my formal education, I, I have a Bachelor of Science in Computer Engineering from the University of Zambia. Um, and then in terms of uh, what I'm presently up to, uh, I would say my career has been short. I finished uh, school recently. Um, uh, right now I'm working with Teveta. I joined Teveta in 2016 as a software developer directly from school. Um, so I'm currently working as a software developer with Teveta, though sometimes I work as a consultant for Ministry of Higher Education. I've developed some softwares, both at Teveta and Ministry of Higher Education. Um, and then in terms of uh, what I hope to get from this course, uh, you know, as a software developer, um, I think it's a good idea to always strive to broaden the scope of uh, your understanding. Um, as a software developer, we are, we are solution implementers. So what I would say I'm hoping to get from this course is knowledge, new knowledge, both from, um, uh, both from the course and also from my classmates. I'm hoping to get new knowledge, new knowledge on how to implement solutions that will better uh, be implemented to solve problems, uh, not only in my in my in the sector that I work for, but also in other sectors. Thank you. All right, uh, good stuff. I mean, uh, I don't know if uh, 2016. Uh, Five years, I don't know if we can classify that as being a short career, maybe, I, I don't know. But, but uh, trying to think, I mean, I, my, career, <laughs> my career started in 2007, so maybe, maybe yeah, I, mean, I, th I think so. I think maybe, maybe it is short relative to the vast majority of people in the, in the, in the, in the course, I suppose. Uh, good stuff. But uh, the vet, I mean, interesting thing, the ones that happens to, um, uh, it has a number of affiliate colleges. Apparently, there's a directive from the ministry um, to say all these uh, colleges, right, um, that we have dotted around the country are supposed to be affiliated by either one of the state-owned universities, and so always happens to be one of those. Um, so I've been I've been fortunate to be a part of these these um, these uh, events that are tied to these affiliate colleges that we have. So interesting things going on around the country. Uh, one of the things that I, th I think is a bit of a problem is uh, um, the inconsistency that exists uh, uh, by way of the different programs that we, we have offered by these entities, right? So you find maybe uh, a college, the Teveta College, offering the same program as College B, for instance. But if you look at uh, uh, the forecast or the content that they cover, is somewhat different. And, and, and I guess what I'm trying to say is uh, there's potential to do a bit of data mining, perhaps, who knows, I don't know. Um, but again, um, we are fortunate, the vast majority of us in here are fortunate because we, we've been working in these, these different organizations that we're trying to work for for quite some time. And so we already have an idea as to what sort of problems exist. And it turns out that when it comes to phase two, the research component of the program, most people tend to struggle with identification of a problem. Easiest way to identify a problem is to think of the problems at work, right? And try and see if you can convert that into a research problem, right? Not an engineering problem, but a research problem. It turns out there's a difference, there's a difference between research and engineering, right? But uh, we get to talk about that, I guess, in research methods with Dr. Piri or something, Dr. Jackson Piri. All right. Um, I think the last uh, person is supposed to be Yasin uh, Ayami. 
Uh, and and I, I know he joined us late, but what we're doing is just a personal introduction. So I'm just going to beam up uh, a slide of uh, things that we're expecting you tell us about yourself. Uh, over to you. Uh, so evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Ayasin Musayami. Um, for my education, my background is um, I did a Bachelor of Technology in Information Technology at uh, the Deben uh, University of Technology in South, in South Africa, uh, that was um, in 2016. That's when I graduated. Yeah. Uh, what I do for a living, um, well, I do some consultancy in um, uh, software development and uh, software quality assurance. And then, um, then uh, lately, I've also been around. I've also been involved in projects to do with uh, Internet of Things and drone technology. So basically, um, yeah, we 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 training kids um, to kind of make uh, to kind of make use of uh, of these emerging technologies. So mostly our focus is on IoT and drone technology. And then what I hope to get from this course, well. Uh, initially, um, not supposed to be part of this course because um, when I applied, I applied to do research. Um, yeah, but then I'm kind of in between right now um, whether to continue with with uh, the research route or to do to go the uh, the tort route because at the end of the day, I'll still have to do some some research, but. Uh, nonetheless, my, my interest mostly is um, in uh, machine learning, AI, um, there's quite a number of stuff that we've been doing in that regard. Uh, yeah, so mostly I'm looking at uh, expanding my knowledge in the field. All right, uh, it's quite interesting. And so, so the, the, the part about the, the difference between your research on the masters and, and uh, the, the coursework and dissertation masters is, is pretty interesting, right? And I. It turns out I did a, a coursework and dissertation masters myself. Um, it's a long story anyway. Um, but uh, the fundamental difference, that in so far as Unz is concerned, is um, that the difference is, is the, the difference is different depending on which institution. Like if my alma mater looks at this variation differently. Anyway, uh, but the difference when it comes to the Unza is that uh, what you what you what you produce once you're done with the degree is what they call a thesis, right? At master's level, um, so if you're pursuing a research only master's, um, uh, but for a course of dissertation, what you produce is a dissertation, a discourse, or something. Um, interesting stuff. I mean, obviously, the they say the in terms of research, what you get to focus more on is slightly more involving than a, a coursework and dissertation. And in fact, if you, if you if you read up on what a thesis is, you're supposed to come up with a a tenet, right? Essentially something that's novel, something that's new, something that hasn't yet been done before. Uh, but with the dissertation, um, the main objective is to try to prove that you understand the end-to-end -end research process, right? Uh, so I thought I've mentioned that. Um, I'm not sure who, which, which, which uh, in terms of this, you, you're saying you teach kids. Where are these kids from? Okay, so we've got um, uh, we've got school programs, uh, after school programs um, at uh, mostly we're dealing with international schools at the American International School and the International School of Lusaka. So yeah, uh, that's where we get to teach these kids. Yeah, I've, I've always thought it's very disappointing that uh, you see what you're doing. These initiatives will only take place in, in these more affluent schools, right? Uh, I attended this UNESCO organized event not too long ago. Was that last year or year before last? Um, I was giving a keynote and we had people from, uh, from there's some Indian school, I've forgotten the name anyway. And they are so ahead, right? They teach programming in primary school. Uh, and I sat there and I'm thinking, this is what you should be, we should be doing in government schools as well. Um, so I wonder if there's, there's something we can do in that space. But in terms of IoT, uh, you probably want to look up uh, what Francis did, part of the solution that he came up with when he was trying to detect uh, so-called four NOMs is, um, is uh, incorporated uh, the Internet of Things, right? So if you look at uh, how 
how the solution he proposed uh, to detect formulas, these traps had, uh, was that Arduinos or something, some gadget that was implemented using an Arduino. Um, but I don't know, you probably want to look that up. So what I'm trying to say is, uh, again, still tied with what I, what I raised earlier, application of machine learning and, and AI actually has become so mainstream. The same goes for, for these things we're calling drones, right? It turns out that, uh, I hope I won't forget where I'm at here. Seven. It turns out that uh, ZRA, I don't know if people have or heard about what ZRA was doing not too long ago. I'm just gonna skip ahead to the part where ZRA was uh, in the news, right? Uh, yeah. There we go. They yeah. Some yeah. yeah, so this is the thing here. And, and all of these things, right? There's potential here to try and incorporate some aspects of machine learning, right? Anyway. Um, but you see, they said uh, the most um, uh, saddening thing. Yeah. Um, okay, so um, I'm also the ambassador for Zindi here in Zambia. Um, I don't know if you've heard of Zindi. That's a data science computing platform. No, no. Uh, well, what, what does Zindi stand for? It's just Zindi. So Zindi, okay. Yes, yeah, so Zindi... It's like Kago. So if you've done data science competitions, yeah, uh, yeah. So it's a it's it's a Africanized version of Kago. Okay. So um, um, yeah, um, they they do host events and uh, competitions, and you find that participation from most countries in Southern Africa is not is not much. Mostly people are participating. Uh, Southern Southern Africa is mostly South Africa. And then you find people from North Africa and West Africa. Um, also, there's this, what we call the deep learning in Dava. It's the same thing. You find that people in these countries and people that... So in Zambia, there isn't much that's, that's, that's been happening in trying to promote, you know, the adoption of um, this technology. Of course, we are talking about them, but uh, in terms of practicality, um, we don't have our own data um and just um programs to build capacity there isn't much right i mean so it, it starts uh it has to start from somewhere it, it ties into the point i raised there right? the fact that we are uh and you 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 may disagree with me here i don't know but uh we are part of that elite group that small elite group in in the republic of zambia at least which is fortunate enough to be doing these things, right? Um, not just these things, actually, being in that position where you can effect change. So you, you talk about uh, capacity and the, the fact that uh, some of these things haven't yet become mainstream, it's true. The same goes for research. I happen to be part of, uh, I'm on the, um, I'm on the, uh, uh, I'm on the, uh, when the, uh, if you can go to our firm here. There's, there's this uh, entity called, it's an SEM supported entity called uh, our firm. And, and I happen to be on the, uh, called this, uh, uh, I wonder if I the, it's, a, it's called a steering committee anyway. Also a program committee, probably want to look it up. And, and the, so the, the thing is, uh, SEM, everybody knows about SEM, right? The thing is, they've noticed that there's very, uh, little representation when it comes to research in this area, right? If you look at the West, for instance, uh, perhaps the East to a certain extent, or to a large extent, you find that they are so ahead of us, right? Um, and so they're trying to see if they can, again, build capacity research-wise, try and train more people so that um, there's at least representation coming from this part of the world. So uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is the, the problem cuts across, I mean, even in academia as well, um, but it starts right here, right? Um, I, I think the fact that uh, increasingly we, ha we have at least uh, a few institutions that have introduced master's programs, for instance, there's talk, for instance, in, uh, at UNSA uh, of introducing, is it a data science-centric uh, master's program as well? Because we've realized, right, that there's an increasing demand in this particular area. So uh, I don't know, maybe capacity building starts with us, um, this group. Um, so I noticed there's uh, someone else who just joined us. I don't know if Roy, uh, 
Check a teacher. I don't know if you can, uh, uh, Roy, so you found us uh, about to wrap up on personal introductions. We're introducing ourselves. Um, you can always play back the recording if you want to, to listen to what other people said. But we're asking if you could perhaps uh, speak to these uh, four bullet points here. Uh, introduce yourself by just focusing on these four points. Okay. Okay, my my full name's uh, Roy Chai uh, Katisha. Okay, then the next point is about uh, the background. Okay, so uh, I have a I have a degree uh, in uh, computing from Greenwich uh, through through Zika's, which I got in twenty twelve. Uh, yeah, so I think that's that's that. What's the other thing? Presently up to what you do for a living. Okay, so uh, currently I'm working with an APSA. Uh, I'm in the IT department under the software development uh, wing. Yeah, so that's where, uh, that's what I'm currently doing. Okay, what you hope to get from CSC 5741. Now, just remind me, this is, is this, is this the one for the data? Yes, yeah, so this is data mining and warehousing. Oh, okay. All right, uh, thank you. Okay, so, well, from this course, basically, I think, uh, I think I, 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 I found a part where you mentioned about uh the demand that is there for this particular area i think there's a lot that can be done so in terms of having to uh analyze data that is out there even within my my current role it's something that i can apply so it's something that uh, uh i definitely want to want to see how i can apply that uh, analyzing the data and being able to present the data in a way that can aid in uh, decision making. So I think that's something that I want to get from from this course. All right, uh, that's great. Thanks for that. I, a couple of interesting points. Uh, the last point I thought was really interesting is point of analyzing data. If you think about it, right, uh, we are analyzing. I mean, we're generating massive amounts of data as, as a country. Um, it's not just the banking sector and the telecom sector, of course, there's massive amounts of data being generated there. But if you, uh, if you think about uh, the hype currently in the country, is, is it a cyber security bill and whatnot? Uh, I, I was really listening to the, uh, what's, what's that lawyer's name? When he was being interviewed and he was talking about, we see cameras being set up in, in even rural areas that don't have clinics and hospitals and something. And my, my interest when I was listening to that was, what are we doing? How are we, are we even analyzing the, if we are capturing those images, are we even analyzing those images, right? If we are analyzing them, are we putting them to good use, right? Um, we see these camera traps being set up. Uh, who is, what are we doing with that data? Are we just, uh, are we just using that data to just uh, um, uh, try and uh, detect who is over speeding and who is not or something? There's a lot we can do there, right? Um, you know, if you think about what's happening on these, these toll booths, for instance, we can automate all those different processes. <laughs> I laugh every time I pass through these toll plazas where you have, you have someone who is employed so that they take money from you and uh, generate a, a receipt and give you the receipt. That's their job, right? Now, I'm not trying to downplay what they do, but I'm just saying in other parts of the world, that whole process is automated, right? You don't need a person, a human being, to be able to do that. You know, so... Um, there's, there's a lot of untapped potential. If you look at Zambia, actually, massive amounts of data being generated here. Uh, now we can sit here and argue whether the data we're generating is going to be put to good use or not. That's never been my interest myself. Uh, my interest has always been in how we can analyze that data, right? Um, we can then uh, share the results of that analysis to people that make decisions and then we'll be able to make better decisions about that. Uh, I thought another point to mention here, there's somebody else from NAPSA here. Uh, something you can consider doing here is uh, if you identify a problem from work, 
is you can do what, um, what Francis and uh, forgotten the guy's name did. So they were working on this large project uh, carved into two. Uh, so solving more or less like a similar problem, but split into two. Um, that might be very helpful in keeping you motivated, knowing that you're working on a similar problem as, as your colleague. <clears throat> in fact, it's always a good idea to, well, from my experience anyway, to work on a problem that is related to what you're doing at work. Uh, that way you get to do, you're, you're solving different problems, but with the same solution, if you will. The white man says, is it killing multiple birds with one stone? Um, so I, I thought that was nice. We have uh, quite a bit of interesting representation here in terms of uh, occupation where people work here. We have consultants, we have people from NAPSA, you know, uh, we have people from private entities with uh, Zanaco, for instance. Uh, uh, we have uh, representation from each year. So I thought this, this is going to be, it's, it's going to make for a very interesting dialogue as we are covering most of these things. Uh, and again, I do encourage us to participate actively. I think that's what makes the course more interesting. Um, for instance, when we get to a stage where we, we, we start identifying data sets to use, if you are, if you think that some of the data sets we're going to be using are going to be somewhat boring, we can try and see if we can, we can use uh, data sets from these other, these other domains. There are ways of anonymizing data, I think. If you're in the banking sector and you have access to data that can be anonymized, maybe we can use that. Um, otherwise, you'll be bored to death uh, with the document classification problems that I have. Um, to a certain extent, I guess, image classification also. All right, and then in terms of background, I thought it was so nice that we have uh, people that were at Zika, Cavendish, uh, people that were in South Africa, and then we have Unza, almost have people from Unza. Okay, so um, maybe just to proceed further and to remind us that uh, in essence, uh, what we are going to be doing, this is a half, it's called a half course. Ideally, it's supposed to be covered uh, in the first half of the year. Uh, so between now and sometime in May and June is when we wrap up the course. And in fact, I find it interesting that uh, the department has actually decided to go with uh, half courses. I think pretty much all the courses are, are half courses in this program. I don't think we have full year courses. Um, but but what we are, we are going to be working towards are these uh, broad objectives. We, by, by the time we are done with this course, hopefully we'll be able to identify the key processes associated with data mining, uh, data warehousing and knowledge discovery process. What you'll soon discover, I think, beginning lecture series number two, is that we, we tend to take advantage of uh, the pre-existing model, right, that helps us solve data mining-centric problems. It's called the CRISP-DM model. Um, during the introduction of the CRISP-DM uh, CRISP model, we also get to discuss um, other models that are out there, so things like SEMA. Um, uh, and, and in the process, we, we get to uncover these key processes. But, but the interesting thing is these key processes come up again as we are discussing subsequent modules, right? Um, and then we should be able to describe basic principles associated with uh, uh, algorithms using practical data mining and understanding their strengths and weaknesses. Now, I should mention up front, right, the, the approach, right? This is lifted literally from the syllabus, but the approach in the course has always been to focus more on how we get to apply these data mining techniques. Um, rather than the theory or the math behind it, or behind the, the, the algorithms. Um, the plan last year was to see if we could focus more on the, the, uh, the background math and the theories, but because of COVID-19, we just stuck with what we've done in the past. I'm not sure, we'll try and see if we can, we can uh, introduce uh, a little bit of that this, this time around or this year. We'll try and see how things go. Um, but I should mention here that my, as I'm sharing, uh, as we are sharing you know, our experiences, my hope is that by the time we are done with this course, you will have a firm sense of how you can apply data mining to whatever problem, whether at work, whether it's phase two, which is next year, right? Uh, that's, um, that's, that's, that's my, personal, my personal goal anyway, when I'm teaching this course. Um, and then we want to be able to apply data mining techniques to solve problems in other disciplines in a mathematical way. Uh, 
So when we cover these different techniques like regression, for instance, and classification, what you notice is we, we use, um, I always try to run away from uh, data sets that are used in, in these textbooks, right? Like uh, the housing problems, for instance. And um, so what you notice is we tend to use data sets from Zambia. Traditionally, when we're discussing regression, for instance, we tend to use uh, um, the JCTR data set, right? To try and see if we can, we can, we can, we can figure out how JCTR, I don't know if people know about JCTR, the food, we, we use the food basket, right? The basic, the BNB. Um, so we try and see if we can use regression to try and predict how much uh, the basic need basket is going to be at a predefined point into the future or something. And it's been in the news a lot of late, right? They're saying it's somewhere in the 8,000 range for a family of, is it five or something now? Um, so we, we tend to use data sets that we can easily relate to, data sets that are related to Zambia, I suppose, is what I'm trying to say. Um, but also, as we are doing this, we also point, point you to, to other interesting toy data sets that already exist out there. And there are a lot of them, right? There are a lot of them. I think when we briefly talk about um, image uh, classification, for instance, is, uh, uh, I like giving this example, this image does not exist, for instance. It's a pretty nice, uh, uh, nice. There's, there's a bit of interesting things happening here. So when, when, you, when you access this site, I don't know how many people have accessed this, but when you access that site, right, the, there's a random image that's generated, right? Every time a random image is generated, this image that you're seeing is, a, is an image of a person that does not exist, right? Um, so interesting stuff here. Now you'd sit there and think uh, of all the weird, um, <laughs> all the weird applications of something like this, right? Maybe advertising, some people would, would decide to use these things for uh, unscrupulous purposes or something. Um, I like mentioning the fact that when we're discussing this, I like pointing people to the fact that uh, as you are refreshing this, what you will realize is that you rarely come across uh, an image of a black person. Um, there's this issue, um, it's, a, it's still a hot topic, I guess, uh, ethics in machine learning, right, and AI. Um, so this issue of underrepresentation is a big thing as well. But anyway, um, this person doesn't exist. All right, uh, so something else we, we, we get to work towards in terms of learning outcomes here is I want to be able to apply data mining methodologies with uh, information systems and generate results that can immediately be used for decision making. Uh, and I guess most of you that work with big data at work might be interested in, in this particular learning outcome here. So I was talking about my desired outcome. I, I listed them here, right? Uh, 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 so for me, I mean, my personal goal, this is the goal of the, pro, the course itself. This is lifted from the syllabus. Um, but my, my hope is that uh, we are in a position where we can successfully undertake a data-driven research project whether you are working on a side hustle or it's a problem at work or you're doing consultancy, I'm hoping that by the time we're done with this course, you'll be in a position to execute a data mining project. Uh, but of course, the immediate, the, immediate, uh, uh, the immediate benefit would be what we are doing next year. I do hope uh, you will work on a data mining centric problem or at least be able to apply some of these techniques you're going to, to talk about. So things like, uh, Things we're going to focus more on here is uh, ensuring that we get some practical knowledge um, on how to use these techniques. Uh, more important at this level, what sets us apart from practitioners is to be able to evaluate what we are doing. So how do we design an experiment to be able to, to assess the efficacy of, of whatever project we've come up with, right? So if you are, uh, if you're coming up with a project to build something like this, this does not, this person does not exist, for instance, how exactly do we design an experiment to evaluate what we've done, right? So I, I, we, we, we get to, to discuss different evaluation strategies, uh, differences between efficacy or effectiveness and efficiency. Uh, efficiency is a big thing. Um, I, I like, I like uh, citing an example of what Robert has been, uh, uh, struggling with right now. Uh, I'll show you an example here. It's, there are some experiments that he's running uh, that are taking long, 
So for one, he couldn't run them on the, and this is basic uh, document classification. He couldn't run them on his, uh, on his laptop, right? Uh, he's running into memory errors here. Fortunately, we have access to, to, or you also have access to infrastructure by Xamarin, right? So high performance computing infrastructure that you can take advantage of. So it's, the problem is running into is to do with efficiency, right? The fact that he's running out of resources. So we get to discuss all these different things um, and how, what sort of specific metrics we look out for when you're evaluating things like uh, the efficacy or the effectiveness uh, of, these, uh, of these techniques, right? So accuracy, uh, uh, F1 scores and precision and recall, um, things like humming loss and all the fancy things that you find in literature. And what you discover is that these metrics that you tend to focus more on are specific to the type of problem that you're solving, whether it's a regression problem, whether it's a classification problem, whether it's a clustering type problem. Um, and then it's always nice to talk about ethics and bias. And I just brought up the issue of bias when I was showing us that this person does not exist. This tool here is biased towards uh, people of a certain skin tone, right? Uh, we can see Asian faces here and Caucasians, right? But we can't see uh, people that look like me and you. Um, a bit of bias here. Uh, also, I like, I like bringing up uh, the Google Photos thing. I don't know if people remember uh, this controversy that was there, um, uh, where a black person was classified as a, as a gorilla, right, in Google Photos. So Google Photos, if you use Google Photos, it's a classic example of where you have, uh, you have uh, image classification there. So you, your image is automatically classifi classified here. There's a person who was classified as, uh, I think he was, uh, when it comes to, uh, I think there's a person who was uh, classified as, uh, uh, yeah, I think I'll share this. Classified as, uh, is it a gorilla or a baboon or something? It was a hot topic, right? This is all centered around bias. Um, so these are things, these are important, these are important topics that we need to, uh, to discuss in part because uh, the rest of the world is having conversations about this. And I think it's a very important, this is a very important area to, to look at also. Um, you probably want to look up uh, <laughs> the actual original uh, tweet, right? Um, there's a bit of profanity here, but, but uh, it got a lot of uh, retweets and, uh, and, and whatnot. I hope it's still there. Hmm. Maybe I can log in here. Uh, I, I like using this as an example. Uh, I like using it as an example a lot. If you can just zoom in here so that, oh my God, did they, this tweet is, doesn't exist now, which is unfortunate. Okay, but, uh, but anyway, uh, you probably want to read up on the original, the original, uh, there's this article that talks about it here. So the person was, um, they fixed this though, they, they fixed the problem. All right. Um, so I, I, I don't know if there are any thoughts so far, I, and I know it's, uh, so this particular session is going to be, again, like I said, a bit boring because uh, uh, we're just describing administrative, yeah, so administrative issues associated with the course. Um, I don't know if people have any thoughts so far about what we've discussed or comments, and feel free to interrupt me if, if, if you wish to. Uh, no questions or comments or additions, right? Uh, I, I don't know if the comment is, or I thought there was a, okay. I, I thought there was a, <clears throat> I thought there was a, a message in the chat. Okay, so in terms of the cost structure. Um, Hello. Yes, hi. Uh, hi, hi. My my hand was up. Okay. Uh, oh, so sorry. Uh, maybe because it's a small class, maybe we can just uh, make it informal and feel free to interrupt me today or subsequent session. In fact, that's what makes for an interesting dialogue, in my opinion, where we just interrupt and ask away or contribute if you wish to. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. I uh, just want to ask on the when we're doing the data. Data mining and so forth. 
what tools are used? Is it like uh, maybe SQL Server database, or it's just option depending on what someone is used to? Mm, right. So when we, I guess what you are referring to is if we touch on when we do touch on the the data warehousing part, but I. I did mention that the, the focus is on techniques that we use to make sense out of the data, so pattern recognition. And there's a slide, by the way, where I talk about tools just now. But what you notice is we we, we go with the flow, we go with what uh, the vast majority of people uh, are using. Uh, so uh, programming languages like uh, Python are used in in preference to MATLAB. Is it MATLAB? I don't know if that's the language. Or as opposed to R, for instance. Um, but of course, once you are working on, because you'll notice when I talk about the assessment that there's a part where we work on a mini project. When you're working on a mini project, you're free to use whatever tool you want to use. But when I'm, when I'm showcasing some, some actual examples, there's a certain technology, a combination of technologies and um, techniques that uh, are used in the course. I talk about that. I think I'll answer a question in, in, in uh, I think, five or six slides from now. Okay, all right. I get to explain the different tools that we use. Yeah. Um, all right, so, right, so like I said, it's a half course, right? Um, and, and remember I mentioned that uh, it's, it's an unconventional, we have a very unconventional uh, thing here, right? So if you look up, uh, I hope I have, I don't have it. If you look up, uh, if you look up the, the timetable, you notice that there, for each course, each course has three periods that, uh, that run on the same day, continuously, right? So in essence, we, we, um, we are meant to, to have these interactions, um, if I can, uh, uh, if I can go to the timetable here, I should probably download it somewhere. I was looking at the timetable the other day. I always like uh, stressing this point, right? The fact that if you notice, it's three hours, right? <laughs> um, it's three hours. So, I'm, and I'm bringing up these three hours here because there's this point where I'm saying the, the course will run using a seminar session. And, and there's, a, there's a deliberate reason why this, it's done this way. We, had, we don't want to make it too boring. We don't want people to lose focus uh, when we have a situation where uh, we have a lecture for three hours. It's just, it's not normal, right? So what we, we normally do is uh, each session like this one, we will have um, an invited talk. So a person from industry or academia will come and give a talk. And I will share details and recordings of past talks, talks that we had from last year. Usually the talks will last for about 30 minutes. Um, they're of course uh, related to the things we're gonna be doing in this course. Um, so th there's a seminar. We have also, uh, we, we've tried to experiment with paper reading sessions. So we have a discussion about a, a paper, an academic paper that will be circulated. Um, and so we, we have a discussion to hear people's thoughts about the paper itself. And it turns out that part of the reason why we, we normally have uh, a discussion, a paper discussion is because we want to, to, and I talk about paper readings, but we want to get into the habit of trying to extract relevant information from an academic piece of writing once we are reading. As it, it turns out that it's going to be important, especially when you get to phase number two, the so-called related uh, work that you have to, to find, right? When, when you're assembling your dissertation, in fact, as part of your proposal, so you do a preliminary uh, literature synthesis, the coit. Um, so I want to make sure that we get to a stage where we we're able to to uh, pick out relevant information when you're reading data mining centric uh, uh, papers, for instance. So paper readings, and then uh, there's a combination of theory and practical. So each session, I guess, with the exception of a few, like when we're discussing uh, lecture series number two, you notice that most of it is just going to be theoretical. There's a, there's less of practice there. There are certain uh, lecture sessions that we're going to cover, like when we're doing a crash course on, on Python, uh, because I think most people are not very, the vast majority of people are not very conversant with Python. 
So we get to look at the crash course Python and a few other tools we're going to be using. Those sessions are going to be solely dedicated to the practical part with a little bit of theory, right? Um, so that's a three hour long session here. I just thought I would put it out there that um, to try and uh, avoid the, uh, the monotony here, we're going to break it up into segments. So we do a, 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 a couple of different things. Because we're at the mercy of these invited, uh, uh, the people we invite to come and give talks. When there's a talk, you notice we're saying every fortnight, so it's every after two weeks, we start with the talk. Um, very few people would want to give a talk at 1930, for instance, 1730 works for them, we've come to learn. Um, and then, I mean, I'll talk about uh, assessments here, but we also have uh, 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 assessments by way of, uh, I don't know why this assessment was under lecture session here. It's misplaced, but I think we'll talk about assessments. For now, just ignore the last point here. Um, right, so um, formally, um, and this slide here includes um, a schedule from last year. I should have changed this so that we just focused on on, on, on this year, I do apologize, I'll update the slides here. Uh, lectures are supposed to be 120 minutes um, long here. Um, and then we'll have paper discussion for about 30 minutes and, uh, and uh, the seminar session for about 30 minutes. And would, would then have, would then have uh, exhausted this period we're supposed to, this period that's allocated to us uh, for, 5741. <clears throat> um, you probably want to make sure that you have water or coffee or something because you'd be, I know most of you would be tired from work. And so it's usually a challenge to, to be engaged, right? Uh, just try, uh, it's only going to be for a year. For this course, at least it's just going to be for the first half of this year. So just try as much as possible to attend as many sessions as you can. Um, what you will notice is that there are certain things that we get to discuss that um, that uh, become useful, I guess, maybe as part of the assessment and also as part of phase two also. Uh, so I do encourage you to, it can be difficult, I know it's difficult. The vast majority of us uh, are doing so many different things. You have families, um, you, there's work to be attended to, you have personal projects that you are running, right? Um, but uh, just try as much as possible to participate in these activities. All right, so in terms of approximately, we, we, we almost always spend about two weeks on each particular theme that we cover or module that we cover in the course. Um, sometimes more, maybe sometimes less. Um, and as, as I mentioned, in terms of our focus, uh, we found that this works, uh, this works best uh, so whenever we are covering a particular area, we, we look at uh, the basics of the area itself, a little bit of theory, especially when we start looking at specific estimators, right? Um, and just a little bit of maths, perhaps no maths at all, actually. Um, and then a lot of practical walkthroughs. Um, it turns out that the practical walkthroughs are going to be useful for when you start working on the mini projects. Um, and then for the paper discussions, uh, they will be suggested to you, right? So I'll suggest a paper that we go and read, and then towards the end, there's a part where all of us get to decide at least a paper. Um, it's carved out as an assessment, actually. Um, the seminars, uh, as, uh, so the seminars are set up in such a way that we invite people from academia, but also people from industry. What you will realize is that the people that we invite from academia uh, tend to do research in, in the area of data mining, but most of the people from industry will pretty much focus on potential problems that exist. Our experience has been that uh, um, there are very few places in Zambia, industry-wise actually, where you get to find people that uh, actually put to practice the things we're going to be looking at here. I remember we invited someone from Zamtel last year, Miss Milimo, um, and uh, one of the questions that came up is, uh, do you use any machine learning techniques, right? Uh, not yet. You know, uh, same goes for banks. I mean, so when Knox was giving his talk, for instance, I remember asking him if, uh, if, if they do uh, analysis on data, he works for NatSev, I'm not sure if he's doing NatSev, 
I hope he is, but we invite him to give a talk again this, 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 uh, this year. Uh, and they don't, right? They don't. So, so it's always nice to look at uh, what's happening in academia and the industry. Uh, and it turns out that personally, this is an area that I, I have an interest in. I have noticed, right, that there's this huge gap between what's happening in academia and in the industry. And most of you have probably figured this out. Um, it would be nice if maybe we can share ideas as, as we interact here on, on how we can bridge this, this divide. Uh, I always invite uh, students that I, I work with in this course and students that I supervise, uh, when, when the time comes for me to carve out projects, fourth year projects, I invite uh, postgraduate students to say, if you have a problem that you need help with and you have the time to co-supervise, um, let me know, right? Uh, for some of you, if you have uh, uh, something that you want to experiment with at work, it's an opportunity to, to gain access to cheap, in fact, free, free labor, right? These fourth year students, that's free labor. The only input that will be required on your part is co-supervision. Uh, and what we're doing there is to try and see if we can bridge that, that divide or gap here. I, I don't know, I mean, it's a far-fetched maybe, I don't know. This has come up a lot. Uh, I know that, that we invited, uh, We've invited the current, uh, I don't know if he's still the president of ICTAS, Mr. Christopher Lalusha. He also works in the banking sector, by the way. Um, and, and we've had these conversations about the fact that uh, this divide exists, and, and I'm happy that the association has actually realized that there's this gap that, that exists. Um, so uh, still on course structure here, our, our, our lecture sessions are scheduled to start at 17.30 um, every Monday, right? 17.30 to maybe 19.30 or 20.30. We can extend this to three hours, I guess, I don't know. Um, all right, and then, <clears throat> so the UNSA uh, has adopted two learning management platforms, learning management systems, LMSs. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea why they're using two separate entities here, but a lot of uh, politics um, high up there at UNSA. But it turns out that uh, postgraduate courses are meant to be administered using a platform called Astria, while undergraduate programs or courses are administered using Moodle. Uh, now, what I did here is I'm, I'm, these screenshots associated with, with uh, Astria are from a course that I'm involved with. I'm not involved in this course this year, but just to give you an idea of how the interface looks like, if you have not yet attended training, apparently there's training be, being organized. Uh, I don't know if someone who has a computing background would want to attend training, but maybe it might be useful, I don't know. Um, so Astria, it turns out Astria, by the way, in case you haven't, Astria is, is based on, um, uh, it's based on a learning management system called Canvas. So if you wish to familiarize yourself with uh, Astria and you don't have access to Astria, uh, I do encourage you to look up uh, Canvas. They have, um, they have, I think, a cloud-based demo that you can use to play around with so that you, 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 you are aware of what, uh, what the interface is like. I'm just sharing the link there to Canvas. So this thing they call Astria, um, I like to rant a lot about this. I sit there and I'm saying, why as UNS are we paying a third party? to manage a freely available platform, right? Paying huge sums of money here, but uh, we should uh, mask out this rant. I rant a lot about this because I think it's wrong, especially when we are at a stage where people keep talking about how uh, we need to cut down on expenditure, right? Makes zero sense here. But anyway, so this is how so-called Astria, I would like this canvas looks like. Very basic interface, point and click here. Um, once, once I'm given, I've not yet been given access to, to, uh, to uh, if I can get to, to the live uh, e-learning. <clears throat> I've not yet been given access to, hmm, I wonder, e-learning, not learning, e-learning, not learning. I've not yet been given access to the CSC 5741 course, decentralization and so-called separation of concerns here. Uh, the person who creates this site is different from the person who actually runs the site. So once, once that course, 
once that course is made available to me, uh, it will appear here and you also have access to it. So in essence, what I'm trying to say is that all courses, uh, including recording, so each session like this one is being recorded in case you want to consume the recording, the recordings for the seminars are going to be especially useful for you. So all of these things are going to be recorded. In fact, even when we have face-to-face -face interactions, I try to make um, an effort to record the interactions. So I'll normally come through with microphones and uh, I record the, 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 I record the screencast of the session itself, and then I share them. Um, so links to those resources will be made available via the learning management uh, system. I'm gonna pause here and just try and ask if uh, anyone has attended training or if anyone is aware that there's training that is, that has been organized for postgraduate students. Uh, am I still there, by the way? Uh, yeah, still here. Okay, yeah. You know, I've been in uh, sessions where I'm talking to myself, right? And, um, I guess this is a, we'll get to the part where we, we, uh, we, we identify the course rep. And in fact, because it's a small class, you will have access to my emergency contact details. I prefer email, but sometimes you probably want to send me WhatsApp message. In case I get disconnected, always a good etiquette to let me know. Um, especially with this online thing. I've been in situations, 10 minutes, I'm talking to myself, right? But anyway, are, are there any thoughts so far? As, is anyone aware of training? Uh, training in what regards? Uh, training on the learning management system, the so-called Astria, on how to use Astria. Uh, no, no, I'm not aware. Oh, uh, so, I, yeah. maybe the course rep will need to reach out to the, to the postgraduate coordinator. They're supposed to be training, I think. I love the training based on the same document. Two weeks ago. That was at the second session. The first session, I think, should have been almost a month ago. I didn't attend the first one. I attended the, the second training. Okay. So the beauty is, I don't know who's uh, doing this training. I know there's uh, a Dr. Galand or something from Confucius. You don't have participate in this training, but they are recorded, I think. So if they are recorded, what you can do is through your course representative or, uh, I, I don't know, uh, you can reach out to the postgraduate coordinator to find out if you can gain access to the recorded training session. Um, for people with a tech background, maybe you might be able to figure out things on your own by just experimenting with the interface once you have access to it, but you never know, right? Um, any other thoughts about this? I, I think, uh, so Derek's microphone is a bit faint, but I, I, I think I heard him say something. Derek, did you have the contributions? No, okay. I don't have the microphone. All right, so, but in addition, right, in case we want to share large or huge files, um, we will share them using certain platforms like uh, Google Drive, for instance, because we, um, I know there's uh, someone from Unza here who knows that uh, using your Unza signed email account, uh, you have access to unlimited space, actually, right? So we, we, we make maximum use of, of those things. So we typically share some of these links, especially links to large files via Google Drive. Um, what I do myself uh, is I, when it comes to, to uh, videos, right? Recorded uh, lecture sessions, like this one, for instance, what I do, right, is I share these things via uh, YouTube. Uh, so I, uh, I I will normally share these through, and I think I, I, should, I think I should have, a, I'll normally share these through YouTube and some of them are, uh, some of them are, are shared as unlisted links because part of what I try to do is to try and That's see right. See if there's a bit of engagement here. So you normally find them. Uh, hmm. uh, they're supposed to be. If I can just I share them by YouTube or something. But these links are also going to be available. The links to 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 these videos are going to be shared uh, via the LMS. But but uh, anyway, should be able to find this. Should be a section here, wondering maybe it's under home, wondering why the section is not here, that's under home. 
So you typically find them under this section called uh, Teaching and Learning, Live Lecture Recordings, Screencasts and Companion Places. Now there's a, there's a bit of confusion here because uh, there are also playlists and screencasts for, uh, or recordings of lectures for other courses that I, <coughs> I coordinate. So what you want to do is you want to be on the lookout for CSC, um, CSC 5741, so something similar to 57, and it's not here, why is it not, maybe it's because it's not listed, uh, but if I go into where I'm, 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 I'm logged in here, I hope I'll be able to see this, maybe not, CSC, okay, it's not, uh, maybe under the playlist or something, um, CSC 5741, I should add this, wow, maybe it's, I know it should be here, my, my different, but in any case, I mean, all of these links I will share with you. Um, but just to showcase that uh, these things are shared via um, <coughs> YouTube, and it makes sense, right? I, I don't think the owns uh, our colleague, uh, I don't know if it's Mr. Msonda from, who will, will, will tell us that uh, we have unlimit we have limited uh, things. Here. So th these things here, is, uh, all the lectures will be shared. Uh, dedicated playlist, right? So you have access to all the lectures, similar to what, what we have here. Now, now there's something really interesting here about these lectures, and I think this is a point worth mentioning here, right? You see, uh, the order has changed here. There's a lot to do, and so some of these uh, lectures are quite lengthy. Like, imagine this session being recorded, right, from 1730 to 1930, or even 2030. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know what we can do about that, what I do encourage people, uh, uh, or colleagues in this case, uh, enrolled in the course is say, when you have time, what you can do is rather than when you have a recording like this, for instance, what you can do as a group is you can, you know what happens in YouTube, right? You can, uh, you can mark the timelines. So you mark the timelines so that uh, the next time you're playing back this recording, and I, uh, I'm going to, I know there's, uh, there's, uh, uh, there's bound to be a recording where I talk, uh, not here. Uh, data mining. I want to showcase uh, what, what I'm talking about here. So if I showcase an example of a video like this, for instance, what we can do as a group is as a, but I thought maybe before. So I, when we have class, what we can do is we can do this. Right, so mark, mark these long videos, come up with uh, timestamps for important segments. So like for this recording, for instance, uh, we can crowdsource this as a group and say, during this period we we're discussing administrivia, during this period we we're uh, discussing grading or something, right? So that if you want to play back this recording, you don't have to start from scratch and waste time. You can just go to the part that you think is important for you, right? And in this case, I'll just go to maybe how to use a TFID effectorizer, for instance. Um, but that can only be done if we do this as, as a group or something. So if you happen to find yourself watching a recording of the lecture session, please keep note of what's happening in the different segments of the one hour long session, two hour long session, or three hour long session, and then share it with the rest, and then we will upload it as part of the description like so. Uh, all right. Uh, Again, like I said, if you have um, any questions, just feel free and interrupt me. Uh, I know there's still a bit of time here. It's 19, John. Uh, any thoughts so far? Everything is clear, I hope. Hello? Yes. Yes, I wanted to ask. Uh, I've logged on to my, my ns.unza. Yes. Uh, when I go to class registration, I can't yeah. find, uh, there's a drop down which before I would, it would say 2021, but now yeah. it's not showing anything there. Hmm. Yeah, I would have to, I don't know if you've been, so this is a new thing, by the way. <laughs> it's funny, uh, and I should say this before. So the, the answer to that question is, uh, would have to reach out to the postgraduate coordinator because I don't have admin access to the platform. I'm just a normal user like yourself. And because this is a new thing, people are experimenting with so many different things, right? You know, people that don't know how to use the system. In the past, we, in fact, last year we were using Google Classroom, right? Um, I will share this in case you want to. I will share last year's 
course in case you want to look up uh, what we did last year. The other year we're using Moodle, right? So um, I, I don't know. We would have to reach out to the postgraduate coordinator, Dr. Jackson Piri, and uh, raise that issue if you can't see if you can't see what you need to see. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, so in case of uh, in case people are uh, asking, but is there a book or something? Well, these things I'm going to talk about, um, the books I'm going to talk about here, the recommended texts and prescribed textbooks, these are things that you will find in the course syllabus, which I will share, by the way. Um, there's a course syllabus for the course. It essentially is pretty much summarizes some of the things we're talking about right now. But, but so these things are from directly lifted from the syllabus. But what you will notice is in each slide deck that is used for these sessions we're going to have, uh, so a slide deck like this one that I'm using, what you need to realize is that towards the end of the slide deck, I'm slide number 20 here, towards the end of the slide deck will be a bibliographic slide, right? It will have a link to all the resources that I would have used um, to prepare the, the, the notes. Um, but uh, technically speaking, all these books that, that you are seeing here um, are going to be useful. Some of them will only be useful for specific topics that we get to cover. Uh, so there's a book called Data Mining Concepts and Techniques. Um, now this is probably one of the, one of those areas in computing which has a lot of hype. So there are resources everywhere, YouTube videos, um, um, uh, blogs, right, dedicated to, uh, to, to this, right? So things like Data Mining ma ma Mastery, for instance. Um, or is it machine learning mastery or something? So, but anyway, in terms of like four prescribed books, uh, data mining concepts and techniques by Jay Han and uh, M. Kamba. Um, there's also uh, data mining techniques for marketing sales and customer relationship. Uh, uh, for most of these books, we're just going to, they're, they're probably just a few select topics that we, we, we use this book for, these books for, but there are, there are, there are some books where we get to we get to pull out, and I don't know if it's here. Oh, there we go. This is um, this, this book by Whitting, uh, Frank and Hall. Um, there's quite a bit that we pull from here. Although the, the only issue here is that in terms of the practical aspects of the book, they use a, a platform called Weka, right? We don't use Weka, right? Weka has a, it has a, it's, it's, um, it's, it's one of those platforms that is, uh, that is meant for people that don't have a computing background, right? Very easy to use. Um, uh, but, but it does, the, the tool is inconsequential here, right? If you're reading a book, what you're interested in is just the content. I mean, you can always uh, apply what you read about um, using, using different alternative tools here. So I'm just going to go back to, where am I? Oh, there we go. I'm just going to paste the, the link to Weka here in case you want to look up Weka also. Uh, all right. <clears throat> um, all right, so these are books. I mean, uh, for this course, really, we don't obsess a lot about books, but uh, if I was to recommend a book, I would say, uh, there we go. And I think this book should be freely available, I think. I could be mistaken here. It should be an e, e version of the book. Uh, so somebody asked about uh, specific tools that we are going to use in the course, primarily, right? most of the, the, the code that's going to be used is going to leverage Python. Uh, so we're using Python extensively. Like everything is centered around Python. These other things are just frameworks that are, uh, are written in Python. So things like TensorFlow, Keras, uh, PyTorch for deep learning and all those things. This is Python, right? Uh, Jupyter Notebooks, uh, or it's, it's not really tied to Python, but fundamental is mostly used for Python-based projects, right? So um, I always like mentioning upfront that if you wish to replicate some of the things I'm going to be sharing, there's a specific environment that I personally use uh, for these things to work, especially if you're not using uh, a Jupyter Notebook, for instance, you will have to make sure that you are running Ubuntu. And I think I'm currently running, uh, could be wrong here, but I think I'm currently running uh, uh, okay, I'm, in this machine, I'm running 18.0.4. I don't know why I said 20, I think it's the other laptop. But 
let's stick to 18.0.4 or 20.0.4, right? Uh, so if you wish to replicate some of the things I'm, I'm going to be showcasing. And this is especially the case for uh, things like scripts, right? Scripts, maybe bash scripts or something, I don't know. Um, but as always, most of the things that would be done in, in let's say, uh, 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 Ubuntu, for instance, or Unix based uh, OS could easily be replicated on Windows, right? Um, well, we're going to, like I said, we're going to make extensive use of Python, specifically Python 3, I think it's 3.6 or something. Uh, uh, but let's just, let's just stick to 3, right? It's version 3. Um, I'm currently using 3, 3.6.9, but if you download any, any Python 3 version, it should be fine. Now this version thing is, might be important or something because I can only help if you run into problems, for instance, installing some of these, some of these uh, tools. Um, I can only help if you're using the same environment I'm using. Right? It would be hard for me to help debug um, a problem if you're running Windows. I brag a lot, and I hope it's most of you as well, to say I have not used Windows in many, many years. The only time I use Windows is when I'm teaching, uh, there's an introductory uh, computing course that I teach, and uh, I normally use VirtualBox. But, but so if, if you need me to help with fixing a problem to do with your setup, uh, I can only help if you're using an environment similar to mine. It, these days it's very easy, right? And I, I think most of you know that you can take advantage of things like uh, um, you know, virtual box, for instance. I don't know. Uh, right, then be able to install these things, which is why I mentioned that uh, you can pretty much use the virtual environment, like virtual box. <clears throat> All right, so um, specifically when we're working with Python, once we start looking at uh, uh, the machine learning part of the course, especially, which is the central focus of the course, really. Uh, what you'll notice is that uh, we make extensive use of a library called scikit-learn, um, probably one of the most widely used machine learning libraries out there. Uh, it could be wrong. Uh, it would be nice if you could do a bit of research here. Uh, very easy to use. Once you, you learn how to use Python, you notice that using scikit-learn is just as easy as uh, input. Right, so import package name or from package name import, right? Um, from from library import package name or something. So it's trivial. We have dedicated session where we we do a, a crash course on Python. I'm gonna pause here and just find out if, uh, are there people that have experience working with Python? Uh, I know the developers may be in the house. Uh, anyone, Python? Is that, is that a hand, Francis? You don't need to raise your hand, you can feel free to uh, uh, to chip in if you want to. Any, has anyone used Python uh, extensively? No? Welcome. Uh, myself, I've, used, I've made use of Python. Uh, Python I've made use uh, of uh, some of the machine learning libraries like scikit-learn okay. and stuff, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, listen, what you notice, right, is, um, is, is that when you're using these libraries, right, this is a thing with machine learning has become so easy. And in fact, if you go to uh, places like fast, fast with AI, for instance, uh, uh, you will notice that the barrier to most of the things we're going to be doing here has become so low, right? You probably want to look up fast with AI there. Um, you know, so what else is there? Uh, I don't know, Andrew Young is, is uh, I know Andrew Young is, is, is doing something similar to, uh, I've forgotten the name of, uh, um, I've forgotten the initiatives to do with deep learning. They're trying to, it's so there are people that, that are trying to deep learning, um, I don't know. Uh, anyway, there are, there are people that have uh, <clears throat> have realized that uh, when we increase the barrier, right, the entry barrier to some of these things, we can have more people. Uh, anyway, that's fine. I wanted to look up the actual name of uh, the initiative that he's a part of. But 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 uh, so all of these people, people behind Fast AI and initiatives by uh, people like 
Andrew Yang, for instance, you notice that they're centered around, uh, they're centered around trying to, trying to make sure that as many people get into this space, right? So again, tied to the fact that uh, when you're using some of these tools, right? It's so easy to use these tools these days, like TensorFlow. I mean, all you need is maybe, well, I was going to say 10 minutes, but maybe not 10 minutes, but maybe a week and then you'll be able to get started with TensorFlow. Um, if you want to use frameworks for deep learning, for instance, um, image classification, um, uh, you'll notice that using a framework like Keras is, is not that hard, right? So, but anyway, we'll get to look at all, all these things here in terms of tools. This is some of, some of the tools we're going to use as we're working through these things, uh, but extensive use of Python is the key trait here. Um, so scikit-learn, uh, PyTorch, and this, by the way, was supposed to be not really PyTorch per se, but uh, uh, something I forgot to include here is most of the code that I will be using will be shared via uh, Jupyter Notebooks, right? So to give you an example here, I'll just showcase something we've been doing with uh, uh, recently with, uh, uh, with Robert, I guess. So I, I don't know if people have used Jupyter Notebooks before, but uh, this is what you get, right? It's uh, centered around reusability, right? So the fact that uh, you can create code that's reusable. So if I have the Jupyter Notebook like this one, I can share this with you and you'll be able to run it, right? So you create a pipeline. In our case, it will be a machine learning pipeline with all the different components, the different phases we're going to be discussing very, very soon. So um, data collection, and data understanding and all those things up until evaluation, right? Uh, so I can share this with you and you'll be able to run this um, this notebook on your end. The beauty, right, is in as much as you can run Jupyter Notebook locally like I'm doing right now, but you can take advantage of uh, cloud-based solutions like Google Colab, for instance. Um, and this is, this, is, uh, this is Gold here. This is, this is Gold at G-O-L-D, by the way. Um, because it, it makes it a lot easier for you to be able to replicate some of the things I'm going to be showcasing. So if I, some examples that will have notebooks, similar to this, for instance, I'll share the notebook with you, and then you can play back and experiment with the notebook, uh, either by using Google Colab, for instance, um, or alternatively, you can install Jupyter Notebook uh, on your machine, right? Pip install Jupyter Notebook, it's as easy as that. Um, using Python. Uh, so I'm sharing these things, I mean, they're there also. Um, yeah, so these things are just screenshots, some of the libraries and the tools I was talking about here. N nothing to speak home about here. Um, so when we start looking at things like exploratory data analysis, where which happens to be a very crucial part of the data mining process, you will soon see once we look at the CRISP-DM model, um, we make extensive use of uh, Matplotlib for graphing, right? Um, we will have a discussion on why it's, it's much more advantageous for you to plot things rather than look at the raw data. So if I'm to showcase this, uh, I hope this is a good example here, probably not. You probably notice that some of the cells in this notebook, maybe not in this remote label classification, maybe because I reset this, this is a bad example, I guess. Um, I was going to show, say that, uh, yeah, this is a bad example. I was going to mention that I can go to, I was going to mention that if we look at specific uh, notebooks that we're going to look at, you notice that there'll be fancy graphs, web clouds and bar plots, horizontal bar plots and uh, line graphs and all those the fancy things. What you will notice is that uh, making sense out of what's going on, right, is a lot easier when you graph things, especially when you're dealing with massive amounts of data which is what we're doing here. We're trying to study that. If I can go to last year's slide, maybe. Yeah, I don't know if this is going to work. I don't know if I have uh, notebooks here. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. Um, I was trying to see if I can come up, I can find uh, maybe here. So the plots that you are probably hopefully going to see in this notebook here from last year, um, we are all created using matplotlib, right? Very nice. But listen, when you're doing exploratory data analysis, it doesn't matter if you want to use matplotlib to do this or if you want to use Excel, um, but what you will realize, right, when you're dealing with massive amounts of data, uh, like some data sets that we've been working with, 
uh, you can't use Excel, right? And I know what you're thinking. Well, I can use Google Sheets and Microsoft Excel. Yeah, good luck to you when Excel freezes. Which brings us to the other thing we're going to be using, right? Besides a Matplotlib to do these things here. Uh, mostly during exploratory data analysis, right? So that we can visualize the data we are working with. Um, different types of visuals here. Uh, but anyways, we discuss all these things uh, once we get there. It turns out that we, we use uh, Python pandas, and I'm wondering why I don't have Python pandas here. But we make extensive use of Python pandas. Um, very, very, uh, I love Python pandas. I use Python pandas a lot. Uh, not the panda, the, that animal, but uh, Python pandas, right? Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a data analysis library. It's really nice tool to use. Uh, and I guess once we have a brief intro to Python pandas, you will hopefully get an appreciation of why this, this is a go-to tool here. Now I know, right? maybe once we get to the part where we get to look at the warehousing component briefly, we might look at tools like, uh, is it Power BI or something? I don't know. But, um, but yeah, so there's Python pandas as, as well. I don't know why I forgot to include, but it's probably listed here, I think. Wow, it's not here either. Okay, that's sad. It was supposed to be listed under tools because we, it comes up over and over again, over and over again. Um, trying to see what we, what we have here. Okay, so we can finish off what's remaining here and then the next part we can, do the next time and then ease into the introduction. All right, um, so in terms of cost grading here, uh, and I know a lot of people are probably, uh, I saw someone new by the way, welcome Miss Nicole. I, I, so in terms of cost grading, this is a distribution of how the 50, 100%, uh, uh, the cost mark is distributed. 10% goes towards paper reading sessions, right? So we. We share papers, you read the paper, you provide us with a summary of the paper, what the paper is about, and then there's, uh, there's a weighted average for all the papers that are going to be discussed. Uh, all of those are out of 10. Uh, so usually shared as in the form of homework, so you have a week to provide a summary. Uh, one week is usually not enough because like we said, uh, and we know this, most of us are busy people. Uh, seminar presentations, right? There'll be a time for when you get to present things, uh, 5%. Class participation, 5%. Uh, class participation is in the form of attendance and, uh, and also contribution. So when you have a seminar, we expect you to ask questions, there are marks allocated to that, uh, and also just attendance. And then 20%, right, is allocated towards the so-called mini project. So we, we get to work on a very mini project, a very small project, don't underestimate it though. The idea is to apply the things we're going to be covering as part of theory. Um, you know, so uh, we start working on it, uh, I guess after next week, we should be able to share the, the description of the problems and then you get to select the problems and then we start working on the project. So 20% 20, 20 is, uh, is allocated towards the mini project. I think I talk about how this 20% is distributed uh, soon, but it's broken down into the the technical report that you produce, the presentation, the, um, the actual artifact that you implement, so the pipeline which is usually shared via uh, a Jupyter notebook or something, something you can easily uh, reproduce. Um, and then the other 20% is allocated towards um, the class theory tests that we write. One class theory test is a half course. Is it two, two of them or something? I don't know. Usually we write one. Um, so you notice, right, that uh, the CA, accounts for 60% of the course grade. When you're writing the exam, what you're fighting for is just remaining 40%. It's standard practice for all postgraduate courses, if not most of them. Most of them, if not all, at UNSA. Last time I checked, it was all of them actually. Um, and you, I think you can see what's happening here. The focus is at postgraduate level is rarely on, on these assessments. I mean, they're there quite right, but uh, is different for when we're doing uh, undergraduate studies. But anyway, so remaining 40% is the final exam which we uh, physically uh, go and we write from the sports or something, I don't know. Or maybe, no, DRGS somewhere there. Uh, so this was what I was saying in terms of the breakdown, some samples of the breakdown from past years here. Um, each paper 
it accounts for a weighted average. I, I've masked out the student names from this particular academic year. This was before last year, uh, when we had 11 people. Um, and so for each paper reading session, the summary that you submit is marked out of 100, and each one is considered a weighted, uh, has a weighted contribution towards the 10% here. Right. Um, and then in terms of attendance, uh, we normally, once we have confirmation on these invited guests that are going to start coming very, very soon, we have a predefined schedule on when these seminars are going to be held so that you can plan ahead. Because there are marks allocated to attendance and participation, you want to make sure that you plan to attend these events. So a schedule is similar to what you're seeing here, uh, details of the person who's giving a talk, when they're giving a talk, uh, and, and, and really what time. <coughs> um, sorry about this, uh, I'm, I'm just saying, this, this is legacy from last year. I should have changed this. I don't know why I forgot. Um, we don't have people that have confirmed participation yet. We, we try to not to recycle people because we have a lot of people that can give talks. We try to bring in people from different places. Uh, for the first time, we had someone from UTH, a radiologist last year. Um, I hope someone is going to be working on an image classification type problem this year. I don't know. We had a, we normally invite a number of postgraduate students as academic speakers because we we have the view that the structure of their talk will mirror what you are going to do in phase number two, and in fact, what you are going to do as part of your Viva Voice, the oral exam. Remember the the grading of, of the research component of the of, of the of the course itself um, involves an oral exam, right? So presentation you give. Um, uh, once you are done with the dissertation. Um, and then uh, in terms of the mini project here, just to showcase uh, uh, the 20%, how it's split up here, it's similar to this, right? So 20% is split up into the implementation part, the technical report and the presentation. Um, and, and then these subcategories are further split up, right? So the implementation, for instance, there are marks allocated towards the data collection, um, the actual code that you write, if, if there's something novel that you've done, the relevance with regards to the problem we are solving, the demonstration that you, you showcase, um, uh, all these things. All of these things will be specified as part of uh, the problem specification in the form of an assignment that will be made available to us very, very soon. Uh, I wanna pause again and just to ask if people are still there. We are still here. Okay, yeah. Yeah, sorry, yeah. I usually... We are here. Oh, thank you very much. Usually this first session, I rant a lot uh, to myself, but subsequent sections, uh, lecture sessions, interactions, I think are going to be much more interactive and interesting if we have back and forth, right? Um, questions and whatnot. Um, and then again, so still on the, how the mini project is graded, you know, present, there's also, uh, uh, I, I thought I would include this slide from before last year, the different problems that students worked on, right? So we had uh, people that were working on uh, square research uh, data, uh, advertisements and web search and uh, square research output here in terms of the network uh, electronic thesis and dissertation portal here. Uh, interesting stuff, someone was analyzing uh, YouTube comments. Um, but anyways, I, I mean, so all of these things uh, very, very soon will Makes sense. Um, I will share, once the Astria site is up and running, what I what we do is we share exemplar projects from previous years, uh, high scoring projects so that you have an idea of what it is you'd be working towards. So high scoring presentations, high scoring technical reports, high scoring repositories, uh, because each all of these things are shared in the form of a Jupyter notebook and also um, a GitHub repository or Bitbucket repository or something. Um, and in terms of participation in these presentations, uh, so examples of uh, paper presentations that were done by students. Uh, I will share these slides and then you can look at these things at your own time if you wish to. Um, yeah, in terms of the test here, you notice for uh, the 2018-2019 academic year, we had two tests there, uh, the, just the, uh, uh, the maths here. And uh, part of the reason, by the way, why th this, image looks very gloomy is uh, uh, it's tied to the issue that most of us are busy people, right? I do want to encourage us to at least dedicate time to this. 
uh, it's data mining and warehousing is probably one of the easiest courses. Uh, well, perhaps it and uh, advanced web, uh, is it web, uh, web systems? I don't know, web, I don't know what the course is. Um, but, but you need to put in that extra effort, right? And sometimes it might, sometimes it might seem like you have enough time, but you will not. You'll find yourself in a situation where you are writing a test and you're not prepared, right? And you, you will, this is not nice uh, in my opinion. This shouldn't be happening at this level. It shouldn't, but it happens because uh, uh, creating time, this, it, it sh shouldn't be like this. I mean, I, I don't expect this to happen to us. Uh, from what people are telling us, you know, your backgrounds and the extensive experience you have, right? Uh, but, but it happens because of lack of preparation. And the test will come, it's coming, right? Uh, so we don't, I don't think we would want this, right? But anyway, um, that's, that's that. Uh, and then finally, I mean, the final grade obviously is going to be an, um, uh, a combination of uh, the CA and the exam. So this is just showing you, um, it's showing you the CA component. This is the 60% for the 2018-2019 academic year. The highlighted part, the red part is a high scoring CA. Um, this is a 60%. Uh, out of 60%, and the other 40% is in the exam. Um, all right. <clears throat> um, and this last part just shows you how much someone, the percentage mark somebody needed to get for them to pass the exam. And the reason is simple, right? The reason why a person like Elastic Net, for instance, only needed 6% for him to pass the exam or how to pass the exam is because for you to pass the exam, um, according to DRGS, you need to get at least 50%. Now, if you need to get at least 50% and the CA is out of 60%, then it's easy. It's possible for you to pass the course before you write the exam. Except UNSA has this policy where you must pass both the exam and the CA for you to pass the course. So even if you get 100% in the CA, if you fail the exam, typically speaking, you fail the course, right? Um, I don't know if you are aware of this breakdown. For those of you that were at the UNSA during your undergraduate studies, you needed to realize that the pass mark for undergraduate and postgraduate um, programs is different. It's 50% uh, at this level, not 45%. Um, so in terms of course management, um, um, so I'm supposed to be co-teaching this with Dr. Piri. He's probably, Dr. Jackson Piri is probably going to come in. I don't know if you noticed this uh, here. Uh, I don't know if you noticed that, I think you did though. Uh, somewhere here, right? It's written, it's here, right? There's uh, Dr. Jackson P slash uh, myself slash Lighton here. So I guess this would have been changed to Lighton and Jackson. Uh, in terms of my contact, uh, I check my emails very regularly. Sometimes my phone is, uh, is on airplane mode because uh, it's one way I can focus, right? Uh, uh, so I, I don't particularly like uh, communication channels like uh, WhatsApp because it makes it re relatively hard for you to follow up on issues. If, someone dis if somebody sends me an email about an issue, when I act on that issue, I archive that email. When somebody sends me a WhatsApp message, I would need to find time and enter it into a, uh, a task manager that I use or something. And usually if I'm busy, for instance, I might forget about that. If somebody calls, for instance, uh, and I'm busy, I might forget about that, right? Because unfortunately, unlike uh, uh, Mayumbo, the HOD, who has a secretary, who manages things on his behalf, perhaps, I don't have a secretary. Um, in terms of where I work from, uh, I know it's COVID-19, in the wake of COVID-19, if you want to physically come and see me, I work uh, from the School of Education building right up the fifth floor, room 515. Um, usually I block off certain office hours. Because of COVID-19, I'm actually shifting my office hours to Thursdays between 14 and is it 17. I will share these, but tentatively we can just say Fridays 9 to 13. Usually during office hours, you will find me in the office and you can just walk in and uh, um, come and chat to me. But because you are busy people, perhaps you would want to come and physically see me over lunch with a mask, of course, I don't know. Um, there's a link to my calendar. It will show you my free slots. 
Um, so once you go there, um, you can just choose a, a free slot and uh, I guess it, free slot, let me just check if, you can just choose a, oh wow. You can choose a free slot, um, a free slot that will showcase, uh, so these gaps here that you have, gaps would be my free slots. Um, I wonder if we have the class here, is it here? Why is it not there? I don't know. Today is Monday though. Oh, it's here. I was wondering where the 57 foot one is. Okay. Um, And then uh, what we do in the course, right, is remember I mentioned about WhatsApp. Uh, it, we found that uh, using a mailing list is uh, far more effective than WhatsApp. Now I, I do check messages on that WhatsApp and I share things on the, the MSC 2021 WhatsApp. But my thing is you want to be able to easily search for things, right? If you want to find them easily, right? And we found mailing is quite useful. So there's this mailing list. I don't know if there's a course representative um, if there is, maybe you can compile a list of email addresses for everybody, send them to me so that we add them to the mailing list. If there isn't, please uh, send me a message and just tell me to say, please add me to the mailing list item. Uh, my email address is, is there. Uh, and then I'll be able to add you to the mailing list. So when you have access to the mailing list, actually, the beauty is that you can also look at uh, dialogues that we've had in the past, right? So if I go to... Uh, and I'm, I usually have a lot of, if I go to the mailing list here, to the group, you'll notice that um, I will have access to, there's a web interface which allows you to go back in time and look at the different conversations that we, we had, right? And I do encourage conversations here because uh, I think at this stage especially, it's important that we have conversations. Maybe you find something interesting related to the course, right? And we'll share it with the rest of the, um, of the group here, uh, right? Uh, the mailing list address, you, the way you use the mailing list, and I'm sure you're aware of the use of mailing list here, is you just send a message to CSC5741 at unza.zm, and then once you add it to the mailing list, and then um, everybody, it will be broadcasted to everybody. Um, so, yeah, so besides Astria, what I'm trying to say is um, we also make extensive use of the course mailing list. Not that, uh, the interface for Google Groups has changed. Um, and, I, and, and then I thought, I thought I'd mention a thing um, about academic dishonesty, just a reminder here that it's taken very seriously at the UNSA. Uh, they're acquiring things like uh, Turnitin now, which automatically detect uh, um, potential plagiarism. So you want to stay away from this because uh, it rarely happens at this stage, really. So things like lifting code or things from the internet, which won't be possible actually because the problems that are carved are completely, there are things that you probably won't find online, maybe you will, I don't know. Um, but we take this very seriously. UNSA takes this very seriously as well. Um, the policy in the course is zero mark for any form of academic dishonesty. Uh, 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 I, I, I would like to thank you for um, being around until this particular point, right? This is a, the next part is going to be the course introduction, which is good, I think we've, uh, got into the part where I guess we can say we will pause for now and then continue with the course introduction on Monday and then immediately ease into lecture series number two, which is module number one. Uh, so I, I don't know if at this point people have uh, any specific contributions uh, or thoughts, um, perhaps comments or concerns about about what, what we've just uh, discussed. Uh, hello? Uh, are you still there, by the way? We are here. Oh, right. Uh, right. Uh, so I, I don't know if people have any thoughts or concerns, uh, comments, or everything is clear. Um, okay. Uh, then I'm looking at the time here. We, the thing, it's almost like it was planned. It was not planned, right? It's 1944, it's almost like, uh, is it two hours after we started? Now, if, in case of how you feel when we have lectures that are two hours or three hours long, this is exactly how we feel, right? Which is why we're trying to segment these things into, um, into different activities for the course. Um, 
So I noticed that uh, before we part ways, I noticed there was a, uh... okay. Did uh, Holy Spirit, did you introduce yourself? Uh, no, I, 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 I came late. Yeah, that's, uh, I thought so. And I think there was a, a, a new call as well. So maybe before we part ways, maybe we were doing introductions. It's always nice because we're recording this. Do you want to tell us a thing about yourself? Just by focusing on these points here, your full names and how you prefer us to call you, first name or Mr. Piri or something. I prefer my first name myself and most people here. It's okay to prefer to call you Mr. Piri or something. Um, it's a thing at UNSA, right? People want you no know, Dr. X or Professor X. They'll be very angry if you do if you if you don't do the correct thing. And then maybe a formal background uh, and what you currently do, where you work, uh, and what you hope to get from the course before we part ways. Oh, okay, thank you very much. Okay, um, my full name is uh, Honest Perry. You can just call me Honest, it's fine. Um, so I did uh, my education, that was, I was at UNSA, and graduated 2017 in tech, uh, computer science that is. And um, yes, so I'm currently working for NIPA IT section, as the systems administrator and um yeah that's what i do and uh just side side works i also into um projects in terms of development uh yes then um yes i think uh what i hope to get from this course is um just as it is data mining uh at its core i would just i would love to learn on how to apply um, any new knowledge I've gained from this course. Uh, so I'm looking forward to just been um, uh, reading about it, but not extensively engaged um, into activities to do with data mining. So that's what I'm hoping for to get the best from this course. So I think that's just brief information about me. Thank you very much. Uh, excellent stuff. I mean, uh, I assure you by the time we are done with the course, all of us will be experts in this area. You should be able to do anything you want with regards to data mining. I mean, some techniques we won't cover really, um, uh, but, but we'll, be, we'll be in a better position where we can easily figure things out on our own, right? Um, interesting enough, I, I've been working with Robert. Robert is finalizing his work. I, I think you work with Robert and Send, right? Yeah? Yes, yes. Yeah, I, I work with him. Uh, uh, really enjoyed working with Robert. Um, so just in closing, uh, did I have? In closing, I just wanted to say, I, I'm personally very much looking forward uh, to interacting with you, especially uh, learning more about your, your practical insight and experiences with regards to some of the things we're going to be discussing. Uh, I think it's going to be a very interesting, interesting uh, couple of months, actually. So uh, I will see you uh, on Monday uh, at 17 hours. Uh, Thank you very much. When you send me details about the mailings, what you'll notice is that everything, the, 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 the lecture session, it's a recurring event all the way up to, is it June or something? So um, I will resend it so that everybody can, can diarize it in their calendar or something. All right, uh, and then I will, because you're not yet part of the, well, once you send me details about the mailings, I'll send a link to this recorded session uh, and I'll be sending these things via the mailing list up until our Astria site is up and running. Uh, so for now, once you send me details and I add you to the mailing list, I will forward the slide deck. So this thing I was using, right? Including the recording as well. And also something else that we like to share is the chat transcript, uh, because there are usually interesting conversations that take place here, the chat window. So all of these things, are, when we are recording all of these things we've made available to us. It's especially a very, uh, uh, it's, it's very fruitful dialogues and conversations happen when you have seminars actually. So you want to be on the lookout. Um, uh, thank you very much. Can I ask that maybe you also let me know who the course representatives are going to be, maybe via email, you can send me an email and tell me who they are so that uh, in case of anything, we know who to reach out to. Okay, thank you very much and uh, good night. Good night, good night.
Thank you. Good night.